Akatis Power is an American engine developer. They are known for the development of the two-stroke opposite piston engine. Now according to Akatis, these engines are much more efficient than the traditional diesel engines and they also produce much less bad emissions. In fact, their 10.6 litre heavy duty Akatis engine is capable of meeting the CARB 2027 emission regulations which requires a reduction of 90% in emissions of NOx compared to current standards. So how do they do this? What makes this engine different? Well, like I stated previously, this engine is an opposite piston engine, which is a piston engine in which each cylinder has a piston at both ends and no cylinder head. Now, this is no new technology. In fact, this technology dates back to 1882 with the Atkinson differential engine. But the Akatis opposite piston engine is modeled after the opposite piston architecture made popular by the Junkers Jumbo 205 and 207 aviation engines developed in the 1930s. Now what does this architecture entail? In this opposite piston engine there is no cylinder head, which means no valves, no valve seats, no camshafts and no valve train. Each cylinder houses two pistons, which move toward each other, with combustion taking place in the middle. Now this design improves overall efficiency, as the components that are missing are considered to be the primary contributors to heat and friction losses. Now obviously if you have two sets of pistons, you'll need two crankshafts. The two crankshafts, one at each end of the engine, are joined by a set of gears, from which power is sent to the wheels. Now like I said previously, this is a two-stroke engine, and the two-stroke cycle compounds the efficiency and benefits of the opposite piston engine's architecture. With this cycle, each combustion event is shorter in duration, and therefore closer to optimum timing as compared to a four-stroke engine. Two-stroke engines are also smaller in displacement and size compared to four-stroke engines but still make similar performance, which basically means less weight but the same amount of power. Now this engine is really cool, but since it uses diesel as its primary fuel source, it can't really get away from producing NOx. But it can lower its production, which it does. This engine supercharger provides ample fresh low pressure airflow to effectively scavenge the cylinders which allows peak combustion temperatures to be kept in check. This is how they cut down on in-cylinder NOx emissions. But this alone isn't enough. Further NOx reduction is necessary. And this will come from a range of filters like a DOC, DPF, ACR, DEF, EHC and lastly an EGR. And it is all of this that allows the KT's engine to meet the future regulations today. Okay, so all of this is awesome on paper, but how good is this engine in practice? Well, they have two versions at the moment, the 2.7 litre 3 piston engine, which can be used in passenger vehicles, like big trucks and stuff like that. This engine produces 270 horsepower and 650 Nm of torque, and this engine will give 37 miles per gallon or 15 kilometers on a litre, which is really not bad. And then they also produce a big boy 10.6 litre engine meant for commercial use. Now this badass big truck engine produces 450 horsepower, which isn't crazy, but the torque is the impressive part. This engine produces 2,372 Nm at just 950 RPM. So for trucks, this would be great. Okay, so if this engine is great in every way, why aren't we using them in every possible application yet? Well, there are a few drawbacks. Firstly, the two crankshafts add an extra layer of complexity to the engine. People tend to stick to things they understand. And then secondly, the passage of the intake and exhaust ports by the piston rings is bound to cause increased cylinder wear. And when you have a workhorse, you want an engine that will last forever. But I think the biggest problem is that people don't like to change from stuff they know and trust. If a Katie's power can prove themselves, I think this engine will be very successful. And just before I end up this video, there is always that one comment which states electric is the future, so all of this doesn't matter, so why are we even talking about it? Firstly, electric can't sustain the whole world. But let's not go into that. Let's just talk about commercial vehicles. Commercial vehicles and electric don't go well together. Trucks have long hauls, and they don't have time to spend hours recharging their huge batteries. Same goes for construction vehicles. You don't want to run out of charge on site. So fuel-based powertrains work best for any work-based vehicles. Anyways, short tangent over. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I've got many more videos on all things car related. If you like cars, this is the place for you. So just leave a like, subscribe and I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers eh.